how do you, how do you feel about the art of collaboration? And do you feel like that dilutes you as a lyricist, as an artist, being that you have a lot of people on your projects? No, I don't feel like it's detrimental because I know exactly what I'm doing. Like I'm like he like I said like I said in um in um Jeremy Bentham slash just bars. I don't get features for a name to capitalize. I do it so these heroes. I do it so these niggas see their heroes die in their eyes. You know what and I'm that's saying? That's right out the gate. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's right out the gate on that song. That, that right caught my attention. Gate, I said that. That was right out the gate. I said that, and that's facts like 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 i said in the last interview i want to smoke with a lot of niggas Welcome back, people. This is Don't Sleep on the Couch Podcast. I'm your boy, Mr. Prez, and with me always... It's your boy, Cash, a.k.a. Exec P. What's happening, good people? What's happening? Episode 150. 150, man. What's going on, Prez? Hate to do it, Cash. Hate to do it. We 150 episodes in. You think we'll have, uh, you know, everybody in the scene, but it's somebody's first time. Can you please let the, let the new people know who sure, we are and sure. what we're about? It, this shouldn't be their first time, as I always say. But if, if it is, if it is, we're Don't Sleep on the Couch podcast. We're about music, sports, entertainment, culture each and every week, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when our audio drops, our video drops on Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, where we just give you random segments of the podcast. We interview independent artists, established artists, mainstream, underground. It doesn't matter. We love music. And if we if we jam into it, that's what we're going to review or that's who we're going to interview. We also entrepreneurs, culture, like we'll have people, wellness coaches on. We'll have people that's in the trucking industry, just some of our fam and some of our friends that are doing great things out there. And if we want to bring that to you, we'll do that. So that's what you can expect each and every week. So I'm, I'm happy, man. We approaching that, uh, that three year mark, man, you know, episode 150, a few of these milestones. So we doing our thing, man. Just pat yourself on the back. I ain't gonna pat myself on the back. This is turned into a second job. I got a new boss over here that had me like doing all this research, extra, extra stuff. Nah, nah, it's it's been a fun time. We all do us. Uh, this is this is a uh, hey, it's, it's a joy every week, man, to kind of get away and talk about all this stuff. Because uh, as we went through time, you know, you get less and less. So this this is our time to like talk back and get back and like actually fill into these spaces, man. So definitely liking that. Uh, Cash, what we got this week? Hey, Amen. This week, you know, for this segment of the show, we have a really, really dope artist. He was just here a couple weeks ago with a really short EP with Patty Honcho and Blood Blicks. But this time around, he's back again. This man, this young man does not sleep. This young man records off the iPhone and I just don't know how he gets it done, but he gets it done. He has features from people like like Elzai. Uh, our man Jr. He has production from from Nicholas Craven, and the and the list goes on and on and on. Patty Hancho, uh, one of the one of the you know people that come to the couch often here. Uh, and King James, I mean Nums, our man Nums. Like the networking is, is amazing, man. But he he's back this week with another project. What's the name of the project, Press? Let, let us let us know. Uh, white melodies, man. White white melodies, and uh, <laughs> very interesting title. But we'll get into that when we bring them on. Uh, can you welcome Black Story to the couch? Oh no, no, no. We it's just not black today. It's just not black today. We got a producer as well. You know, you know, we like to bring the producer in, and he's produced a lion's share of white melodies. And protagonist this is his first time on so without further ado ladies and gentlemen welcome to the couch for the first time and for the second time we got black jadori and protagonist it's still landing out your head nigga it's still landing out your head nigga but 
but give all praise to the God. But give all praise to the God. The number of 23 is for knowledge and understand and preach the truth, but niggas get so defensive. Mark is scary, black mothers die for who they who did and talking Bambi. So I'm bearing more arms than Mowgli adopted family. They treating us just like animals. Quite ironic, blacks killing streets and black killing beats. All slaughter, but different sonics. I carry more ancestors than ancient slave ships. My rhymes can light a room up, bright the lights on a spaceship, but never crashing. Send them smashing any or challenges. Use a bitch and that's the reason you ain't on my cat. Welcome to the show, fellas. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on, fellas? How y'all feeling? Feeling blessed, man. Not at peace. For sure, for sure. Hey, welcome to the show, protagonist, man. How you doing? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. All right, all right. We got protagonist from the UK, Black Chidori from VA. Fellas, let us know how does this happen, man. Let's let's come right out the gate. How does this collaboration happen? Um, so it was kind of something like I've been wanting to make a whole project with protagonists because before I dropped my debut album, I was already a really big fan of his. Like I was subscribed to him on YouTube and I was watching a lot of his content off of YouTube. And I used to, you know, kick freestyles or rap off of some of those beats. And so eventually it came a point in time where um, we were putting together uh, Ragnarok, the Ragnarok EP. And he had the production on there that had SAS. He was the one that produced that track. And so from that point, since we already got connected then, I let him know. I was like, yo, like we, me and me and you gotta like do a thing right quick. You know what I'm saying? I I don't know what yet, but we gotta make something happen. And you know, just eventually it came the time where I started developing this idea for White Melodies. The White Melodies was already a project I released earlier, but I could get into that later. For sure. Yo, bro, how, how was it, um, you know, making this project as opposed to the first time you guys worked together? Um, well, sure, we had a lot of sort of law around it you know i don't think anyone really knows about this and no one really gives it appreciation but story has so much shit like he sent me paragraphs of law and kind of ideas and i kind of initially there was he kind of just took beats off my youtube and it was just straightforward it was the same for this too but there's a lot of beats which i made in mind for shidori and i've messaged him when i've made them um but it was sort of a lot of ideas being thrown around and stuff like that but that's all shidori i didn't have any any say in that he, he had the ideas straight away Okay, okay. So I was speeding a little bit. Um, just yeah. for people who do not know you guys' music, uh, do not know you guys' production, just briefly explain, you know, kind of where you guys from and just a little bit of your, your history music-wise or what you have out there. Well, in the UK. There you go. Right, How much? Yeah. Are, yeah, I mean, you can expand. You can expand. Huh? Yeah, well, for the most part, it's just grime. There's very little sort of soul-infused um, hip-hop sort of stuff. I should get more in frame. There we go. <laughs> it's, it's just primarily grime. It's just JME, it's Skepta, it's Wiley. And it's sort of going, going more into drill, so I think it's very little sort of connected to the Americans. It sort of started like that and then drifted all the way, which, you know, you can give it its props for, but I'm way more interested in the more American side of stuff, the J, the low um, influence production. Um, but yeah, it's just very... There's not much of that, to be honest. Yeah, like I said, there's not much soul. So I think it's very much, I don't know how to describe it to be honest. I don't know, like sort of synth-based, more synth-based, I suppose, in terms okay. of production. Okay, yeah, I, I've heard that a lot from uh, a lot of uh, producers abroad as far as them being more into some of the American sounds as opposed to what artists in their country are just currently doing because they're yeah. just not rapping off soul samples. Yeah, it's all you they hear, have more really. of a, like a house vibe or something like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's all you hear. It gets boring, to be honest. Like, everyone's listening to grime. It's all a thing on the radio. It gets boring. To be honest, it's way more interesting, particularly soul, in my opinion. All right. And Black Man, for those that don't know, you know, what you do, man, just briefly, you know, break down where you're from and, and some of the projects that you have in, out in the past. 
Um, you know what I'm saying? My name Black Chidori, coming out of Williamsburg, VA. Um, I got a couple different projects out by now. You could check out my debut album, the Black Album. You could check out the deluxe version of that, which is a double album, the Black Album slash Superplex 2. You could also check out my Black Fiction album, and you can check out the deluxe to that called Black Fiction Director's Cut. I got a couple different EPs, Ragnarok EP, a collaboration EP with my brother Patty Contro. You know what I'm saying? I also got the Holy Black Mix Volume One. I got Off Top One and Two. You know, got a couple. I got, I got a lot of shit out. You know what I'm saying? So definitely check me out. I've sure, been putting hey. in that work. <laughs> the list is the list is long. So you guys yeah. out there that if you get into white melodies and that's your introduction and you want to check a back catalog, <laughs> he de- he definitely has one. He definitely has one. So, um, hey Prez, man, where where do you want to start start off, man? It's it's a lot we've been talking about behind the scenes as far as just questions, as far as this project. I know we've only sat with it, you know, what, 24 hours at this point? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's just get into the naming convention uh, right off uh, jump. So White Melodies, you said there was a little story behind it. Could you uh, tell us, like, what was the meaning? And then uh, what's the, what's the, you said these come from old tracks. Give us a little bit of insight on that. So... Back when I was like 14, 15 years old, and I was still just recording music on SoundCloud, um, I was messing with this with this younger woman or this young girl I had met, and her name was Melody. She was she was some white girl that I had met, and um, yeah, you know I'm saying. I forgot how it exactly came about, but somehow, some way, I got inspired to make a full project where I was rapping about all of my personal stories and experiences, both sexual and in general, with this girl, with this white girl named Melody, as well as the experiences I was having from other people in my life who knew about this girl that was in my life at the time. And it was just a little EP. I think it was around five, six tracks. And it was the White Melodies EP. It was spelled totally different, but it was White Melodies because it's a white girl and her name was Melody. And it was about this white girl named Melody, you know? But, um, Eventually, you know what I'm saying, flash forward to a little more recent time after I had developed Ragnarok, um, you know what I'm saying, I was at a different point in my life as well as consciously and spiritually, you know, I felt like, because the music I was making on White Melodies was very, it, it, it wasn't, it's not who I am as a black man anymore, especially the type of shit I was saying. Um, and so I wanted to kind of redo the White Melodies project, but this time as something that's more Black Chidori now, you know? So I decided to go with the name still, White Melodies, but this time spelling it a little more normal. And the significance in the name comes from the fact that it's white producers that made it. Well, that's interesting, <laughs> bro. What, yo, when you saw the cover, because <laughs> you know, my man Black be having yeah, the explanations for your ass, man. But uh, when you first saw the cover and the concept behind it, what what were you thinking? Because I know just now I was like, yo, this this is dope, but it's this is definitely different from your standpoint. What were you thinking when you first heard the whole concept and breakdown? I thought it was sick. I think the cover is sick. I think everything, all the shit, all the covers that Shadori does, he always sends me. Then he sent me a little when we were talking about graphic design, and he just he kills it. I think it's perfect for the product projects. I think he just he nailed that side of things, one hundred percent. Cool, cool. Yo, Prez spoke about the naming convention though, um, too, as well. Is that just like another layer? So, like to me, you nailed it with the okay, the production, right? Then you also have the the cover. And then the naming convention as well, like, 
when we go down some of the tracks. Yeah, let's like look. when you name some of these tracks on here and how they kind of fit in. And uh, I don't know if it was you uh, helping out uh, protagonist, but like uh, the the little skits and stuff that you throw at the end of some of these songs to kind of like you know trigger uh, trigger uh, a reaction type little deal. So uh, I mean, yeah, you had something like uh, Jesus Christ, White Savior, Arians and Dracos, the Starbucks mm-hmm. with the Starbucks incidents, Donald Sterling, mm-hmm. Tom mm-hmm. Hanks, Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. Action Bronson, Sandra mm-hmm. Bullock, Nicole Kidman. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of these, like I mean, you see, you seeing the name and convention yeah. that he's going with these. It's not all of them, but it's 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 up in there quite a bit. So uh can you give us a little background on that right there as well? For some real shit. Um the as far as it goes for like the naming of the tracks, protagonists and sovereign, who were the main producers of the project. They were responsible for my inspiration with naming it. Because whenever I record a track, I don't just already know what I'm going to say. The beat tells me what I'm going to say, what I'm supposed to rap about and how I'm supposed to rap it. So for instance, right, the Arians and Dracos, that was a beat that he had just made. And then it was like, for me, it was like sometime in the middle of the night, he hit me up like, yo, I just made this. Uh, check it out before I drop it fully on YouTube and when I like check this out. So I went and checked it out. It was originally called Byzantine Links and it had a, a picture of Hitler. So I was like, mm, Hitler and then Byzantine Links and then this beat is hard. So I was like, shit, to make this joint fit, White Melodies were also getting inspiration from his original idea with that instrumental. Arians and Dracos, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the sequencing would just kind of go like that. I would listen to the beat, the beat would speak to me, and whatever I rapped about, I would find some type of white celebrity that fit the narrative of what I was rapping about, while also making sure like whatever schemes I had also related to my life as well. And clear, it's that's clear. That's very clear, man. And um, gotta gotta commend you for for having you know that vision and, and working with everybody to do that. Because regardless of what anybody would say, whether they like the album or not, you really gotta give credit for nailing the execution piece of it. There's so many people that's been doing this for a while that it just seems like they put out random shit and and they just don't nail the execution of it. So. Uh, we're listening, man, and you're, you're definitely nailing the execution piece with the skits and tying everything in together. Yeah, and the concept, I mean, carried it on for 20 songs on top of that. Usually, like, when you have somebody who does a concept, it's going to be an EP. It's going to be, like, seven to ten songs at most, and they're going to roll from there. But, like, you was able to maintain it for a full uh, 20 songs, which is a hey, commendable as well. Uh, uh, See, but that's the thing. That's the thing with it, right? You notice a lot of different artists, like for instance, Young Nutty, he'll name song, he'll name some of the songs some shit like Blue Cheese. The shit ain't got nothing to do with Blue Cheese. Me, I'm not naming the shit randomly. Like Nicole Kidman, the whole first verse was a Tom Cruise and Lenny Kravitz scheme where I sat there and I name flipped Lenny Kravitz albums and people (laughs) didn't even catch that in the verse. So I'm not sitting there like, I didn't just name it Nicole Kidman just to name it Nicole Kidman and then do a chorus just so that way it could relate. The whole, throughout the whole song, I'm scheming off of Nicole Kidman and the niggas she dated. You know what I'm saying? So all of the tracks, including the skits, relate in some shape or form to that white person or something that has to do with, you know, consciousness in relation to white supremacy, whether it's over hip hop or over black lives or in general, whatever. You can never box me, I'm too versatile Just a funeral is quite insulting I need a whole ritual, some celebration shit Play some white melodies, my words honor the life I live 
But everything you say can turn against you And every pen run out of ink But cut a tree down, you make a pencil That mean I'm never stumped The root of all evil Roman clumps A couple hundreds to a chicken head Will make a shake a butt That's quite degrading, ain't it? Seeing bitches laying with them laymen Laymen who they don't know But only fuck cause they get hurt They famous for smack them dicks White bitch wanna try black dick I think Nicole can't know. It's kinda hot Yo, I think that um that's an interesting point because some of the 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 music that I grew up on, your and Wu Tang in particular, and and just countless others, man, they told stories. Jay with reasonable doubt, you know, it's like it's just Nas. They told stories, and you you probably still could pick out stuff in twenty twenty five years after it comes out, just based on just certain lines that maybe you didn't get at that time. So that's I like that you you're doing that because it it adds to a replay value. So would you agree, Prez, like the replay value? Because you're not going to catch. I'm not. I didn't catch that. You know what I mean? You catch certain things, but it's just more than enough songs clocking in at what? 50, 50 something, 57 minutes. 50, 50, 53, 50, 54. 53. Yeah. Yeah. Clocking in at that time, you're going to catch something differently. And there's going to be different songs that you like at different times. So I like that you put that yeah. level of effort into it um, because the the casual ear they just not gonna catch that man you know yeah. what I mean but how how do you feel about the casual ear not catching that with so much that you put into it I feel like I know damn well I'm over the head and I like that I'm over the head because on some real shit I don't make music for the casual ear anyway. The casual ear is the masses that's gonna be giving me the plays and streams, which I appreciate that. But the music that I'm making, it ain't for y'all or some real shit. It's for the real niggas, it's for the niggas who know, for the niggas who get it, you know what I'm saying? But see, it's not just my lyricism that I really took as seriously. In the songs, whether I'm rapping or not, when it comes to those skits and shit like that, I got that whole thing from protagonist. He's so meticulous with his own personal productions and his beats where he'll have different skits that are already on the beats and shit like that. I stole that idea from him because those skits, when you listen to his skits throughout his beats, how they're incorporated at on first listen you might think oh this is like just some little funny little interlude whatever but nah it actually has to like you go and check the name of it and then you listen to the music somehow sonically it painted that whole picture that's what i'm saying the his beats and sovereign's beats they are what told me to write what i wrote and do what i did on those tracks with being on on separate parts of the world, you know what I mean? How do you guys establish that type of connection to know, okay, is it just because, you know, you guys are about, what, six, seven hours uh, apart, you know, on, on any given time. So what are you guys doing? I know we have the internet and stuff like that, but time and distance is, that's a lot for anybody to kind of keep up daily with the amount that goes into this project. So, Pro, my question to you is, you know, how did you guys communicate and how did you guys just sync up to with that, that energy to where you just know what he likes or what he's going to gravitate to. And then black after he answers, I'll toss that to you as well. It's a lot of feeding off of each other. I feel like, um, for the most part, I mean, no blacks listen to a lot of my stuff. And that's too a lot of his stuff too. It's a lot of just understanding each other as artists. I mean, a lot of the time people think it's just, you know, a rapper listens to a beat. It's a one way thing. It's never a one way thing. It's off of each other. Um, and like you said, the internet, 100%. Like, if we can't get it down like that, if we can't get it down, like, feeding off of each other, we've always got actual communication in the first place. Black, 
How about you, man? What do you, what do you think as far as just the, the synergy that you guys have together? Like I said, I got to agree with my man on this one. Some real shit. It's exactly like that. Like, if it's not the energy, because like he said, I was already a fan of his. So most of his shit already kind of catered to me. However, once we really started connecting, he started making newer beats with me in mind, knowing damn well I was going to go and check him out and listen to him. So we were all, we would already be on similar wavelengths and frequencies. Like I said, in Arians and Dracos, it's all frequencies, right? So, and if, and if it came to a point where we needed to reach out to each other, you know what I'm saying? I, I got his personal number, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I would go on WhatsApp because you know he's in the UK, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the US. So I'd go on WhatsApp and text him, you know what I'm saying? And be like, yo, whoop de whoop de whoop, you know what I'm saying? Or be like, yo, I think we should use this beat for that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or I picked out this beat, let's swap that beat for this. Like, and then we just work it out from there, you know? Hey, Prince, yeah, Prince, yeah, yeah. We definitely get the time difference right here because, uh, yeah, Cash be disrespecting my sleep. I disrespect his sleep the same way too. When, when something I feel like he got to listen to, <laughs> I hit him up. I don't give a damn about no damn time difference. Yeah, same, same, same here, man. I send him send him text messages all the time, and I know his wife is probably like, "Who the hell texting you?" It's just it's just Cash. He ain't cheating. But um, <laughs> but anyway, man, Prince, where do you want to go, Press? I got feature questions i got um i got, I got particular uh, questions about tracks like well, where do you want to where do you want to dive off into yeah first? let's let's go into the features and then i want to talk a little bit more i think i'll uh, i wait for the feature that is on to come back and talk a little bit about uh he mentioned the the girl melody and like yeah, see let, let, yeah, how that song like kind of ties back in definitely want to stay on the feature can can i open it up prez yeah go ahead who bodied you who bodied you black out of all your features, yeah, who bodied you? Features, who, who, who made you second think? Who, who made you second guess the verse you sent them? I so I'm gonna start with the more obvious one, which I I, I wanted this nigga to body me. You know what I'm saying? Elza, of course. You know what I'm saying? Elza shit was crazy, but on some real shit, Elza he had told me that my verse was like some crazy shit, and then he was like, "Yo, like I need to know." He like after he learned about me, he was like, "Okay, so I know what you about, but like, who the fuck did that beat? Like, you got <laughs> put me on the production team, Like, I made my so week. I, I was yeah, so I put my unreal. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. So I went and I I sent him all the protagonist information. He was like, "Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that." And so then, um, after Elza, I would have to say. Patty Honcho on the Nicholas Craven track. He 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 okay. kind he kind body. I'm not gonna say he bodied me, but I did like his verse better than my verse on that one. Cause that you know what I'm saying. He was talking great, and then the written house bar. That you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that, yeah. That's the one I was gonna <laughs> come back to. You yeah, saying, like, like I know Patty said yeah. it, but is that how you felt in that situation? Walk in with a bunch of written houses. <laughs> <laughs> like that shit was like Patty was talking crazy, like, and it was just wild too because like he did ask me what the song was gonna be about particularly, but I already told him like yo, like I put it in his ear. I was like yo, what would you do if I got a Nicholas Craven track? He was like, he was like nigga, if you just went and did that, that'd be some crazy shit. And then I was like, word, bet. And then next day, when got a Nicholas Craven exclusive, you know what I'm saying? Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Um, pro, as for, as for you, man, um, of course, you got Elzai on one of your tracks. Um, you're in contact with him to possibly work with him in the future. But besides Elzai, man, like, what are some of your favorite features on the album? Um, I'm not sure. I'll probably say Pi 2, 100%. But I can't, I just got to talk about Elza, that's insane, like Slum Village, it's, it literally, that was it for me, I mean, I've only been producing for two years, so it's like, and this kid from Britain who's been listening to hip-hop since he was like a child, it's like the dream, you know what I mean? But Pi is insane too. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That's dope, man. Damn, two years, man, two years been producing from UK, 
Black U19. Press, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> internet wasn't that strong back then like we we didn't have the connections we were still like uh man man wrong wrong errors right yeah man yeah man all right baby like what we fit in, in, in particular press to the features yeah 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 so let's let's just talk about a couple of them uh i mean uh you got patty honcho you had him on here the most right that was three times uh you had him on uh mm-hmm. but niggas of god nicholas craven mm-hmm. land of uh land of nod your head uh mm-hmm. ended it like you ended the album with two songs by him so like i, I thought that was pretty pretty dope man and i i think i yeah. y'all go back and watch the last interview i told him like <laughs> i really love their energy when they're on the tracks together these two they they just play well off each other so so yeah, becoming yeah. like one of my favorite yeah. duos on the track so yeah. uh yeah anything you want to say about any of those tracks like i said you, you already mentioned the written house line i just thought like that that when he went at that and then he came back again on that on that uh uh what niggas guys like I, I thought that was it yeah. killed it. so the niggas to guys joint like i think i mentioned that during i don't know if i mentioned that during the last interview but that track we actually did that was actually the second track we've ever done together when we first met uh, around that time we were already trying to work on the blood mix project it wasn't like 100% developed yet. We were still, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the, in the, in the blueprint stages of that. But that was actually the second collab that we had did because he was a huge fan of Sovereign. And I was like, yo, like I'm trying to work with Sovereign. He was like, word, I'm a huge fan of her. I've always wanted to talk on a Sovereign track. And just because he said that, I was like, bet you want a Sovereign track now. And then, you know what I'm saying, we made that joint happen. You know, and then uh, as far as the land of Nod Your Head, my father was supposed to be on that track originally, but when I asked my father to get on the track, he was saying that he couldn't get on the track and do what I wanted him to do. You know what I'm saying? He had a bunch of different excuses that I wasn't fucking with, but. You know what I'm saying? I, I respect his choice, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not mad at him for it or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But he, my, my father was supposed to be on that joint. So last minute, I went to Patty and was like, yo, fuck it. You trying to be on this joint a third time? He was like, let me hear the beat. And he was like, nigga, this shit is crazy. I think a protagonist is out this world with that shit. And then we just made it happen. Cool. They want to tap into that. Yeah, it pops, man. So I'm all I'm all for the the vulnerability. Uh, those are some of the heartfelt songs, or just when you're talking about your truth in terms of your your personal life, because it's all good when you can spit bars and put a lot of words together. But all that shit don't mm-hmm. equal up the real shit when it comes to a listener like me. You got to hit me right here, you know, in the mm-hmm. chest for me to buy in to you who you are. Mm-hmm. So you did that. We're just speaking on your pops uh, with and Tom Hanks and a little bit, you know, and, and Britney Spears, it kind of ties together, man. Like what, I'm not sure if you've done it in the past as far as you guys' relationships. Um, so, you know, this is a two part question. What made you open up and speak about you guys' relationship, whether it seems like past present type of vibes that I got from the song. And then also when your pops heard it, what was his reaction? Is you text? It's sickening. Trying to get these black men to see the vision. Think the lack of heart makes a man. All you know for is bitching or hitting. But I'm close to home. See, I wrote my soul on totem poles to say that I'm climbing heights in the spirit show. But I know children that's never felt some affection ain't directing. But guess only the Lord knows I'm reflecting, huh? These brothers ignorant, eating, leeching off bitches, got the nerve to call themselves real men. They son was in some peak description. If the shoe fits, wear it and walk a lonely road. The house gonna be real empty when you say daddy's home. Cause if the shoe fits, wear it and walk a lonely road. The house gonna be real empty when you say daddy's home. Brought back bad feelings from the past. Um, so... For Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks was more so focused on 
uh, my perspective and opinion of not only just his fatherhood, but, you know, plenty of um, lackluster fathers in general who don't quite understand all of the real sentiments that go into fatherhood and what you really should be doing for your child and for your son, especially as a man and especially for your black son as a black man, you know? But the result of that, it's not necessarily their fault that plenty of them are like that. It's the result of the fact that they themselves didn't have fatherhood in their lives earlier on. So of course they wouldn't have the real experience or role models to, you know, do what they're supposed to be doing as a father. You know what I'm saying? And then as far as Britney Spears, the whole concept of that song, if you if you understand the whole story behind the uh, free Britney Spears situation where you know, she is trapped in that house. She ain't got nothing but just the music. And then she's got people in her family that have been constantly doing her wrong since a child that also want to, you know, just use her. So the point of that song was about people in my family that I've been hurt by. I, you know what I'm saying? It's not just my father. I've been done wrong by plenty of people in my family, and I've been used by plenty of people in my family. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy that all I really, I, like, I felt like in that moment of living with my father, just being in that apartment all the time, you know what I'm saying? We, we was really down bad, too. You know what I'm saying? But just feeling trapped, like, not ever going out nowhere or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I would just walk outside just to be outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, felt like all I had was just the music. You know what I'm saying? And and, 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 and it was detrimental to my mental health. You know what I'm saying? Especially the shit I was going through. Like like I said in that line, um, it's quite ironic. The bed I slept on was a size for ass. Now I'm sleeping on the floor with a mattress that was made from air. Am I down bad? Yes, but this life, I never saw the air mattress popped. I slept on coffee to my Nana bought it. That was some real shit. That was some real shit. I was sleeping on the floor. I was sleeping on the floor because my air mattress popped and then I didn't have the money to um, buy myself a new air mattress. You know? And I didn't have one bought for me until I was with my grandmother. And then she was asking me why I'm sleeping on the floor. And I was like, because I didn't have the money for air matches. And then she was like, why didn't your father buy one? I was like, and then she bought me one. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Yeah, like, thanks. I will, how can I say this as, as a father? I would probably say, um, as, as a fan, thanks for putting your your personal into your art. You know what I mean? Because you're not the only one that's going through that. You're not the only one that will be affected by it because we have, me and Prez have children. You know what I mean? Of course, maybe that's not a scenario that would happen, but just you made me be cognizant of just different things and how you treat your kids along yeah, the way and I, how they internalize I, it. And you'll never, you'll never really know unless they tell you and, Damn it! I wouldn't want him to tell me in that type of record because yeah, it was just deep, man. <laughs> it was deep. Yeah, look, that's my whole point too with those tracks. That it's not necessarily to hurt anybody or hurt the family members that I was talking about. Because it's more so to speak to the people who who can relate to that type of shit, and then the people that I was speaking on, and those people who are just like them. I want them to more so hear it to gain perspective because not everybody has perspective at the same time. Not everybody has self-awareness. Some people don't have self-awareness because they don't want to be self-aware. You know what I'm saying? And if you're a person that is just plain out ignorant, then there's absolutely no help in you. You know what I'm saying? But if you're someone who 
it just you just never had anybody tell you no shit like that that you really needed to hear then that's some shit that you definitely needed to hear so you can be more you know cognitive of that type of shit you know what i'm saying that i just more so want people to get their eyes open but to answer your second question of how he felt about it i don't know he hasn't he hasn't said anything about about it at all at least not yet okay okay so clearly you made this song but yeah i'm just saying like you know that that conversation would be interesting and hope hopefully it brings a uh upon some clarity to him as we, as a we, father. We've had, we've had we've had plenty of them type of conversations before. For sure, for sure. But yeah, yeah man, that's, that's, that's definitely that's why I had to be a track. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you know what I'm saying, sometimes talking just ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? Gotta be a way to get it out, right? Hey man, yeah. you know, frustration's gotta spill out some way and, and it's best for it to be in a in a positive way, you know, more so than than a negative way, because we've seen a lot of some of those relationships turn really sour, you know, especially yeah. in, in our, you know, our neighborhoods and our our backgrounds when just things can't get right uh, between, you know, a child and a father. So but but again, man, hats off to you for weaving, weaving that in there uh, somehow, because again, man, I was about the bars. I knew you could rap, but this at this pro- at this point of listening to you, this was like where I was like, all right, maybe he taps into that a little bit more. You know what I mean? It's just gonna bring more more eyes upon you because you did it effortlessly. So so hats off to you on yeah. that, man. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Yeah, man. Um, wanted to. You still got any more questions, Prez, about this before I switch? No, no. You the- can go ahead and go away. I know where you want to go. Go ahead and go there, and then okay. uh, yeah, we. I, I I say my last little piece at the end. Cool. So I wanted to kind of go back to Prez's uh, flows and, and different pockets. I, I could tell you doing that a lot more. Um, but my question was really from my next question is really from somebody on, on Twitter that I saw. And I I'm not going to quote it exactly because it's not the question I want to ask. But they, they sparked the idea in terms of you have a lot of features on here. You're working with a lot of people in in our day. It wasn't cool to have a bunch of features. It wasn't cool to work with a lot of people. But as we've grown in listening to music, and I'm just speaking for me and Prez here, um, you know, we have Kanye. We have a whole bunch of people that collaborate, and it's fine to collaborate. Um, you got Drake, whether he writes or has collaborated. Like You have all those different type of things. Jay Electronica. Jay Electronica with the Jay-Z album. That's a long-standing yeah. argument we've had on this podcast. Um, but yeah, I say all that to say this, man. Like, how do you how do you feel about the art of collaboration? And do you feel like that dilutes you as a lyricist, as an artist, being that you have a lot of people on your projects? No, I don't feel like it's detrimental because I know exactly what I'm doing. Like I'm like he like I said like I said in um in um Jeremy Bentham slash just bars I don't get features for a name to capitalize I do it so these heroes I do it so these niggas see their heroes die in their eyes you know what and I'm that's saying? right out the gate like, yeah. <laughs> that's right out the gate on that song that, that right caught my attention gate. I said that that was right out the gate I said that and that's facts like 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 I said in the last interview. I want to smoke with a lot of niggas. At the same time, I just, the people that are featured on the album, it's only a handful of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's JR, there's Know It All, there's Nadine, there's Patty, there's Elzad, and then there's King James. That's it. You know, there's my own Achille as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I can get into a story behind that in a little bit. But I didn't want too many features, but at the same time, I wanted enough features that could satisfy me with the people that I really respected and liked working with. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's that's just that's just the truth to it. I don't feel like it dilutes the art so long as you know what you're doing. Like don't just get a but like don't get a bunch of features, and then let's say you got like seven features. 
but you got an eight track album that's way too many features and then especially if you get embodied on every single feature then it's definitely diluting the art because people are then going to fuck with your music just for the features you know what i'm saying and that's also let's say you're getting just a bunch of names that don't even pair well with you or what you're trying to do you know what i'm saying so you got to be well thought out and meticulous with it when it comes to featuring and me i'm i'm i'd like to think of myself as one of the best executive producers right now in the underground when it comes to this curation shit i'm very meticulous about how i curate projects you know what i'm saying so just want to throw out there that's cash way of thinking i guess that may be the new york mentality it's never been the down south mentality we had outcast ugk uh i mean goody mob like all these greats you know <laughs> dungeon family was a was a thing that everybody wanted to be you know claim like what uh how they mesh together and everything they all made the song that much better so yeah. it never bothers me about the features as long as the whole project is is uh up to par you know yeah, yeah at the same time yeah, yeah right. at the you're same right. time the features that i got i got those features for a reason like they like those tracks i did with them i had them in mind on those tracks anyway except for the jeremy bentham elza was not originally the one that was supposed to be on there it was actually inspector deck because me and inspector deck spoke me and inspector deck i spoke and I told him, like, yo, like, me and you, I want to go bar for bar with you. I want to battle you on the track. Like, that verse I spit was what I had for Inspector Deck. He heard the verse as well. It's just that when it came time to, you know what I'm saying, send him the bread, he wouldn't, he just kept leaving my messages on red and not sending me the info so we could lock it in. So I just was like, mm, I'm on a time schedule and you acting weird, fuck it, I'm going to go to you know what I'm saying? Someone else. So I was thinking of either doing Elza or Sky Zoo. And so I just went with Elza because Elza had tapped in the fastest as well. So I was like, shit, he ready to work. He ready to get this moving. Like, and as much like organic energy that's going on right now, I'm fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad I picked him because his verse went very well. He was more on theme on the track than I was like it's called Jeremy Bentham Jeremy Bentham is the um the European man responsible for the concept of the prison system that's why it's also called just bars it's, it's kind of like a play on words like this song is just bars but prison you know what I'm saying he if you listen to his bars he does a full fucking court scheme subpoena uh you know what I'm saying like the 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 affidavit like the, he he went crazy on the whole full court scheme and everything and then he even went on a full government scheme he was talking about military death con like all types of shit like he was going crazy so i was i was very glad that i picked him bye if i yo he dropped a few gems on this project. Like if if it piques your interest and you're listening and you're you're watching at this point and it piques your interest you dropped several gems as far as just concepts or just things that we're still yet to uncover. So we got to go back and listen again. Again, it just dropped what Saturday, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So 24 mm -hmm. hours, we listened to it once or twice. Uh, again, 20 tracks, you know what I mean? 50 something minutes. It's manageable. You know what I mean? Especially in this, uh, this microwave society to where, you know, they only yeah. want 20, 30 minute joints, but it keeps your attention, man. So, Hats off to both of you guys for for doing that from the skits from the, the the curation pro like you your contribution can't be understated you know what I mean as far as what you brought to the table so more success to you man um but but I wanted to say before we kind of let you guys end off here and to kind of plug the th different things that you guys have got going on pro I'll kind of toss it to you first man mm. so with the possible Elza working with him in the future what do what do you have lined up you know, coming next that you could speak about for the rest of the year. Well, in the coming months, I have a project with Throne. I don't know if you're familiar with Throne. It's space between each letter and the word. Um, but they're a duo. They've been coming up really quickly recently. Um, 
and that's in the works. I think so, so all my production um, should be good. Uh, nothing was else out at the moment. I really want to get something done now. That's like my passion project. Um, but in terms of full projects, nothing nothing to report really now. Nothing like that. So I'll do a pitch for you. Listen, if y'all out there rappers and y'all tired of getting these whack ass beats from a lot of the people that you rapping <laughs> over, go holler at protagonist. His uh his information is right here. If you're watching on YouTube land, I'm gonna leave it up for a little bit. I'm sure he'll he'll say it again before we let him go. Yeah. But go check out go check out his production because it's fire. It's fire. Do you have a um beat stars or anything like that? Yeah, my beat stars is just protagonist. And my Instagram is protagonism. No zeros, no nothing. Protagonism. Okay. Clean okay. out. YouTube as well, right? Yeah, protagonist. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Go check them out. Black, black man. What about what about you, man? I mean, I, I hate to ask the question. I'm um, I'm pretty sure you got <laughs> 17 yeah, more projects know. lined up, man. But uh, <laughs> yo, I got what? for the year for the year because I'm 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 not done yet. I got a B side to White Metal Beats that I'm working on. Um. But one of the tracks that I had just finished is, you know what I'm saying, another protagonist production. He's actually going to have a couple different productions on there on some real shit because, you know, he that nigga. Um, I got the B side to White Melodies. Like I said, I got uh, an EP with Shamir that I'm going to be dropping as well. Journey into Mystery Schools, Volume 1. I got um, a collab with Cala Beats. Um, I got a collab with Emilio as well. Um, I'm also going to be dropping the Holy Black Moose Volume 3 on May 10th to celebrate the anniversary of the first Holy Black Moose Volume 1 release. Um, I also got a kind of gospel slash more spiritual type collab project with Wayne Easy, and then uh, I got some secret shit with Patty that I can't really speak on. But we, me and him, teased it briefly in our other joint. We got some shit where we formed a group, a super group. It's me, him, and one producer. Mm, okay, all right. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Where can they uh, follow you guys both one more time? Starting with with Black. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at God MC Black Chidori. You can follow me on Twitter at y- Young Capital G Capital O Capital D Chidori, and then on all streaming platforms, it's Black Chidori. All right, and Pro, just uh, let let them know one more time where they can follow you and in all your different places where your your beats are. Yeah, YouTube, protagonist, Instagram, protagonism, Twitter, protagonism, but the second was a zero. Yeah, that's it. But keep on Instagram. I'm mostly on there. Okay. Prayers, prayers, man. Clean, clean it up, man. Do I, what, what, what did I forget? What did we, did we forget anything? Any last questions? Uh, no, nah, you, you got everything, man. I just want to tell everybody, definitely go check out the album. Uh, don't think you'll be disappointed in it. Uh, like I said, the name scheme, how he kind of fit in. He he gave you a pretty good detail, like every name, uh, every, every song that's named that way uh, has a play into the uh, the actual song. Uh, what you got, Tommy Egan? I know that was one with Jr. A lot of power references mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. uh, you, you're you're getting it. I mean, it's like uh, he's he's on another level with this. So uh, definitely go go tap in. You know, comment. Uh, go go back to his past projects. Uh, oh, I think we're gonna get plenty more, more from Black Jadori, and I, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Every every project that I've heard so far just gets better and better. So there's I still can't more believe more. that that uh, that song you did with Patty. You saying like that was like the second song y'all did, like. <laughs> It felt like it's y'all third, fourth iteration of songs like that. One more thing, though. There's an artist by the name of Sincere. He's just recently popping on the scene and whatnot. But this artist, Sincere, we're actually going to do a collab joint with full production by protagonists. Mm. He's going to produce that album. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, Sincere is sick. Definitely check out Sincere. Okay. Can we get his Instagram too? Can we shout him out, or is that not? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, go ahead. Right, what, what's his uh, yeah. Instagram? Uh, it's Let me see if we can get it. <laughs> at, what's it? At Sin NTS, I think. 
but it's sincerely yours on Twitter. I know that for sure. Okay. Yeah, his Instagram is at, at sin.fnts. Yeah, he's sick, yeah. man. 100% check him out. He's sick. Hell yeah, hell yeah. For sure, for sure. We'll, we'll add it, we'll add it, uh, we'll add it in, man. No, we'll, we'll get it. So, yeah. Dang. A lot, lot of stuff, man. Busy, busy, busy hell guys, yeah. man. So, I said I said at the beginning of, no, I said it late 2021, actually, that 2021 was going to be my, I mean, 2022 was going to be my year. Like, I'm, I was serious about that shit. Serious. That you are, that you are, man. So, once again, you guys go check out the young brother Black Chidori. Go check out Protagonist's production. Um, lot, lot of heat, a lot of back catalog for you guys to catch up if you haven't caught up. We definitely don't like to have people on the podcast that we are not fans of, or we don't, you know, want to want to give a chance to as far as just to spread the word and spread their message. So we want you guys to go check them out. Let us know how you feel about it in the comments. Go stream their music, but most importantly, go to their link tree. Go to the band camp, go support the artists so the artists can continue to grow, elevate, buy new equipment, get more features, get in a better <laughs> studio, do all those things. That doesn't happen with you just streaming it. Doesn't happen. Wait, I just want to put that out the there. You're going to get a mic black? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's still on the iPhone. Oh, the iPhone, man. We didn't even get into the iPhone thing. That's that's crazy that blows that still blows my mind yeah, that still like kills me like hey we got we gotta get this man a mic Ooh, just iPhone, imagine man. What, what this man can do <laughs> it's the iphone son i got i got two iphones on some real shit this is the one that i record off of the other one you know what i'm saying case yeah, in point no excuses if you out here nice. i don't got this keyboard i don't have this mic i don't have this i don't have that there's no excuses you can get yeah. it done you can make it work for you it may take a little bit longer but you can get it done, man. But black, yeah, man. <laughs> it's time, man. It's time. You 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 growing, man. You growing, man. And it's it's yeah, gonna yeah. be soon before people start calling just based on these concepts and the fact that That's you right. are executive producing and you are putting it together. There's there's a vision there. There's a vision there. So yeah. it's gonna get bigger and better for you, man. So nice meeting you, pro man, for the first time, man. Black, you always man. welcome back, whether it's for, you know, your music or anything else, or if you just want to, if we yeah. have a topic yeah. on here and you know we're going to talk about it, if you want to pull up for anything controversial, we'll definitely love to have you back, man. So same goes uh, out yeah, to you, bro. Yeah. Y'all make keep sure y'all keep, everybody that's watching this, make sure you keep protagonists on your radar or some other shit. He's yeah, man. Totally beats on YouTube. Count it. Tell Every me. single day. He's a monster, man. He's a monster. For sure. Thank you, man. With that said, this is episode, we wrapping up episode 150. Don't sleep on the couch podcast. I go by cash again, AKA exec P and the man to the other box. His name. Mr. Prez. And we out. Right. We out. We out.